Hi, I'm Mitch from Sonam International and welcome back to our Anaplan tutorial series. Today we're going to go over a topic that most new model builders find confusing and I definitely found confusing when I was getting started with Anaplan and that is the different security settings being roles, selective access and dynamic cell access. Over the next three videos we're going to go over each setting and how you use them in your Anaplan model. Let's get started with roles. And here we are, working again with the Leprechaun Smoothie Company. They sell smoothies all over the world and they're looking for help with their security settings regarding their sales forecasts. So we've made this model for them. Let's start by looking at the modules. The first module is BU01.1, where you can see the budgeted sales volume for the year, a percentage you want to increase that volume by, and then the sales target for the next year. If you change the increase, you can see the sales target change. The next module takes these country level targets and puts them on a plant level, which you can see in volume year and sales target year plus one. This module also has an override function. For example, if we wanted to change the London number to be 230,000, we can enter that volume, click the override button, and the final volume changes for both London and Liverpool to make sure the sales target stays the same per country. The final module, BU02, we have these final sales targets by both product SKU and plant. Using these three modules, we have also created two dashboards for the two roles that we are going to be creating today. The first dashboard is for the country sales manager, the second for the finance analyst. The country sales manager will handle the percentage increase for each country, as well as any overrides needed for the plants in his country. On the other hand, the finance analyst sees all of the budgeted volumes for this year and next year on a plant SKU level. They also have the ability to export these budgeted volumes and analyze them somewhere else or send them to someone else. Anyway, these are the dashboards and modules we will be using to create the roles for this model. One final note is that even though this demonstration is happening in the classic UX, roles, selective access and DCA all work the same in the new UX. Now, let's get started with roles. When we talk about roles, we need to go to the users tab. You can see that there are two roles at the moment, full access and no access, the default roles. Full access can see everything, whereas no access can't even see the model not even if they're a workspace admin, and you won't see them in the users list. For this demonstration, I have already created the country sales manager role, but I'm gonna walk you through creating the finance analyst role. To create a new role, we go to the roles tab, and you can add a role by clicking insert and entering the role name here. Once you have done that, you can head back to the users tab and add anyone to be that role. So let's go back and change ourselves to become a finance analyst. Now that we're a finance analyst, we will see what they see, which at the moment is nothing. That's because when you create a new role, most of the permissions are set to restricted. So we need to change that by looking at the other tabs in the users list, being modules, versions, lists, actions, and finally the contents menu. Starting with modules, there are three levels of access, none, read, and write. None, as you can see, means they can't see the module. Read means that they can access the module, but can't write anything in the module. As you can see, we can't do a percentage increase here. However, if we change it to write, that means we can make any changes in the module. So we can change the percentage increase to 5% for the Netherlands, for example. But let's not annoy the client by changing their forecasts. Moving on, versions work very similarly to modules with the same none, read, and write accesses. Next, let's look at lists. Lists are by default set to read for everybody. However, if you want them to make an edit, such as through an import, you need to give them access. However, this also means that they can change any current list members. In the classic UX, this means they can change a plant name just in the module, which can be a big problem sometimes. But what's good to know is that this doesn't happen in the new UX or for numbered lists. The last tab we need to look at for roles is the actions tab. Here you have a boolean of whether they can use that action or not. If you want somebody to use a process, 
you need to tick every action within that process to give them access. Finally, if you have a process to import a list, you need to give them both access to the list and to the action. Here's a quick example of what it looks like for the end user. If they don't have access to an action in a process, they can't run it at all, saying it's unauthorized. But as soon as we change it, you can see that you're able to run it just fine. I will quickly go set all the proper permissions for the finance analyst and then we can move on. Alrighty, welcome back. I've set all the finance analyst permissions the way that I want them. Now, if we look at the contents menu, we can see all of the different modules that they have access to, as well as the dashboard that I wanted them to see because they have access to all the modules on that dashboard. You can also see that they're able to run the process that we needed them to run, being the export process. Now, let's say I want to make this dashboard the first thing a finance analyst sees when they open the Anaplan model. To do that, I need to set it as their landing dashboard under the roles tab. It's the only one I can choose for our finance analyst because that's the only one they have access to. Same for the country sales manager, they can't see the finance analyst dashboard because they don't have access to the modules on that dashboard. If I were to change the access to the modules of the dashboard or add a new module to the dashboard, the landing dashboard will go red because the finance analyst will no longer have access. So you need to make sure that you always update your module permissions whenever you're making an update to the Anaplan model. Now our contents menu is pretty ugly. I only want them to see the dashboard, not any of the modules. To change that, let's go to the contents tab. You will see all these grayed out squares, meaning that they don't have access to that module or dashboard, and then these other squares with checkboxes, meaning that they can see this and they're seeing it on their contents menu. If you uncheck those boxes, it's taken away from the contents menu. Now this looks much better. Finally, it's best practice to turn show new contents from on to off so that the end user doesn't see any changes you make to the model before you're ready to publish it. Now our roles are set, so let's see what it looks like from the end user's perspective. I'm starting off as a finance analyst, so when we open the model, I'm sent to the finance analyst dashboard. If I open up the contents, you can see that there's no show hidden contents and there's no settings cog. Finally, I'm able to use the export just fine. Now let's try the country sales manager. Again, going into the model from the workspace and we're taken to the country sales manager dashboard. Just like before, the contents has no show hidden items and no settings tab and I'm able to write everything that I need to for my role. But wait, the country sales manager should only be able to set the target for their country. How are we able to do this? To do that, you need to use selective access, which is what we are going to go through next time. And that's it for part one of our series, focusing on roles. Next time, we're going to take a look at selective access and see how you can use that in your Anaplan models. Subscribe to be notified when we release a new video and follow us on LinkedIn for more useful content. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.